Hello food fans, going to have a hungry man meal. This is the boneless fried chicken. I like this very much. And we're going to add uh, maybe something secret uh, in the way of dessert when the dessert uh, time rolls around. This meal has a dessert in it. It has a brownie. Also has sweet corn and mashed potatoes. And I'm going to cook it in the microwave according to the instructions on the back of the package. And we will uh, Eat that, we'll also maybe have a salad or two, so let's get started! Well, this does look good. It is uh, 26 grams of protein, for those of you who are counting. And I don't know uh, how many calories or anything like that. I didn't pay too much attention, but mashed potatoes, corn, Fried chicken without bones, which uh, makes it a little bit safer for the kiddies and for the grown-ups. And it's a little bit too hot to taste right now, just fresh out of the microwave oven. Try some corn. Mm-hmm. Corn tastes good. But um, in addition to the corn, I've got other vegetables, raw vegetables. Uh, my salad, which is uh, cabbage, carrots, uh, tomato, Roma tomatoes, and uh, we've got some uh, mayonnaise, some relish, and some ketchup in there. I have two other salads. I figure about 25 cents per serving for salads. I got potato salad, macaroni salad, and my regular cabbage salad. This is definitely less than five dollars, probably less than four dollars total, including my dessert yet to be seen, and my beverage. Some more corn right now. Try a little bit of the chicken before I have uh, some of the salad. It's possible to eat some pretty good uh, meals for under five dollars. If you go to fast food restaurants, you'll find it's more expensive there than fixing the same meal at home or something better at home. Mmm. Hot. Time for first taste of root beer. And the root beer always tastes good. This is uh, root beer that I bought at Kroger for 79 cents for two liters. I do about half my shopping at Kroger and half at Aldi. They both have great bargains. Try some of my cabbage salad. And some potato salad. Talk a little bit about uh, some Hollywood stories. Potato salad is good. As always, getting down to the bottom of that, I have to get some more of that this week. And some macaroni salad. I might get together with a friend of mine and do a musical get-together food video. Maybe later this week. I guess this is January 4th. Macaroni salad is good. Um, 
talk, uh, I guess, first of all about Flashdance, the movie. I worked on that as an extra for probably about a week. Worked on Wall Street. Wall Street, New York was not the same as Wall Street in Los Angeles. I worked at Wall Street in Los Angeles. Wall Street in Los Angeles is in the Skid Row area. And we worked on a movie called Flashdance. One of the people I talked with a lot while I was on that movie was uh, a fellow named Jeff Hornaday, who was the choreographer. And the year before Flashdance was made, Jeff Hornaday was selling sunglasses under the freeway overpasses just to make ends meet, meaning he was not uh, yet big and famous. But after Flashdance, he was probably the number one choreographer for movies for several years. He did the choreography on the chorus line and other movies. And he and I talked about Flashdance. And we liked the people who worked on the show, the fabulous company to work with. But when we found out the actual story idea where there's a girl who goes to work at a steel mill, but she wants to be a ballet dancer. And it just sounded like, boy, this is going to be a loser. The flash dance came out in the non uh, high expectation time of year, probably about April. So it wasn't uh, going to be welcomed by the summer crowds or the Christmas crowds or anything. And Jeff and I, when we worked on it, didn't think the movie would be very successful. We liked Adrian Lyon, who worked on the movie. He was the director, and he really believed in the movie. We thought, boy, it's going to be a disappointment for him when the movie doesn't do too well. The movie did incredibly well, made $100 million at the box office. Right out of the gate, it was a big hit. showing that uh, I certainly couldn't tell what it was that was going to be the next big thing in Hollywood. But that movie caught on. Sometimes movies that are expected to do real well don't do well, and movies that are expected to, to flop turn out to be successful. This is a good meal. With the salads, especially the raw cabbage salad, this should be very helpful. I'll mention something about a fellow named Paul Winchell. Paul Winchell was a very successful ventriloquist. He had a ventriloquist act that was on the Ed Sullivan Show and all the variety shows in the 1950s and 1960s. Paul Winchell had a puppet called Jerry Mahoney. And one, <coughs> one would think uh, Oh, it's nice. He's bringing some laughs to the world. You wouldn't expect much more than that, but if you look up the story, you'll find out that Paul Winchell was one of the people who 
invented or helped to invent the artificial heart. It saved lots and lots of lives. So for a comic ventriloquist to be helping the world of science uh, seems a little bit incongruous, but uh, Paul Winchell was the Elon Musk of ventriloquist. Back in the early 1940s, there was a famous movie star named Hedy Lamar. And of course, uh, most people today would be thinking of Hedley Lamar from Blazing Saddles. But Hedy Lamar was a beautiful actress. And she came up with some sort of an idea based on a piano keyboard of 88 different frequencies. Somehow she came up with a uh, system where a message could be broadcast and it would keep changing frequencies, like one word would be on one frequency, another word on another frequency. And she came up with that, which eventually became part of the um, computer technology that uh, brought about the desktop computer many years later, decades later. So my point with Hedy Lamar is she was beautiful, she was an actress, she made movies, she was successful, but she still was a person with a great brain who invented something that eventually led to uh, computers for everybody. Um, you can read about it, uh, probably book length story, but there have been some actors, actresses, comics and so on who had um, other great talents. I worked in a movie called Melvin Howard. Jason Robards was the star. And they asked me to stand in for him on one scene, which I did. But I never saw Jason Robards. I worked with him on Melvin and Howard. I worked with him on Something Wicked This Way Comes. I worked with him on Max Dugan Returns. It, I was never there on the set the same time he was. I never did see Jason Robards. Several movies I worked on that I did no scenes. One was um, Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid with Steve Martin. I was on the set. They were going to have me do a scene. But then they canceled the scene. And I worked with Jack Nicholson on a movie called The Border. And all I did Myself and one other extra, we were there to do a specific scene and they kept saying, we'll get to it later today, we'll get to it this evening, we'll get to it a little bit later, we'll do it tomorrow. Worked two days on the movie, they never did do the scene. I had lunch with uh, Jack Nicholson for two days, it was so much fun having lunch with Jack Nicholson. I've mentioned this before, but since I have a lot of new subscribers, thank you. 
new subscribers. I'm very, very pleased to have you here. But uh, if you're having lunch with Jack Nicholson, and he's over here, it, his voice is very distinctive, and when you hear him saying something in a movie, it makes sense. His voice works. But if you're just having lunch with him, and you say something like, uh, um, Hey, Jack, hand me that uh, salt there. Yeah, yeah. Here's here's your salt. Here, here. He would. Uh, he sounds sort of menacing with casual conversation. Looks like rain. Uh, it was fun working with Jack Nicholson, even though I didn't do any scenes with him. It takes a long time to do things in uh, movies. Have you ever watched uh, Singing in the Rain? No, not Singing in the Rain. Pennies from Heaven. Pennies from Heaven. If you see the movie, You'll see me in the title song sequence. It lasts maybe three minutes. It took us ten days to do it. Worked at MGM. I'll set the meal aside right now and grab the dessert to save some uh, time. Get another sip of root beer. Dear John, the TV series I was on was a very efficient TV series. Rarely ever did we have overtime after the first season. Here's a uh, look at the uh, brownie, put it in a little plastic holder here. But I'm going to have something with it. homemade fudge. Got that with the chocolate brownie. Mmm. One is not enough. Get a chocolate one. Got one of these back here is square cut. What tastes good on chocolate? More chocolate. A very good meal that. Uh, Hungry Man puts out there. And the brownie is a big plus. You got Christmas candy. That's a good way to make use of it. I think a certain amount of sugar is good for you. But there are plenty of arguments against them. I 
This is good. Thank you for watching.